I am going to Goodwood Revival. I'm just gonna keep these sunglasses on because obviously I look fabulous. I thought it would be really fun to do a sort of victory war outfit of both vintage handbags, original 1950s handbags. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, I am a knitter, a sewist and a gardener and this is my channel where I share everything to do with living a handmade and homegrown life. So today's video is quite an exciting video. It's going to be all about a vintage event that I am going to in September um, and I am really really excited to share with you guys all about that. Um, so for those who don't know, if you didn't see my previous video, um, I am a freelance writer as well as a digital content creator Creator. I write for crafting magazines, um, lots of sort of sewing, knitting magazines. Um, I'm a features, regular features writer for Simply Sewing magazine. And um, in September, I am going to Goodwood Revival, which is a vintage car event, car racing event, and now fashion event. Um, and I am writing an article all about everything that's going on there um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what exactly I'm going to do. Um, so Goodwood Revival I think has been running for about 25 years. Um, I have been twice before, I went back in 2018 and 2019 because my husband is a really big car guy, he works in the automotive industry and he's really into cars so I have been to many a vintage car event and many a supercar event as well <laughs> but um, yeah that's sort of where we meet um together is i have a real love for vintage and vintage fashion you know old black and white movies when i was younger i used to dress very vintage i used to dress mostly 1950s and 60s pretty much all the time um when i was in my very very early 20s um and that was a real thing for me. So that's sort of where our interests cross over a little bit is on vintage things. Um, and so I have really enjoyed going to Goodwood Revival in the past. Um, and then this year I decided um, we would go for my husband's 30th birthday. Um, and I also spoke to my editor at Simply Sewing Magazine and um, we decided that I would write a little piece about that. Um, I can't talk too much about what I'm gonna write about obviously, cause it's gonna be in the magazine much later on this year but I am going as press to write this piece um, and I am going for the full three days so previously we have only ever been to Goodwood Revival for the day because it is quite an expensive event um, and it's a long way away from where we are so as I say, we've just gone for like a Friday or a Saturday, but excitingly this time we're going for three days. My husband's 30th birthday is actually on the Thursday, so it works really well because we're going to have a lovely relaxed birthday day. Um, we've got a lovely accommodation, we've got glamping pods, um, and we are going to then go all day Friday, Saturday and Sunday, um, and some of his family is going to join us on the Sunday as well. So that is going to be super, super lovely, um, and I am going to vlog the whole weekend. Um, it's going to be quite a lot of stuff um, because it has really taken off in the last 25 years as a fashion event. So as I say, it's been going for 25 years and it's basically um, a celebration of vintage motor racing. So from the 1940s to the 60s, when they used to do a lot of motor racing at the Goodwood racetrack. Um, and this is an event that sort of harps back to that golden age. So it's all cars from the 40s, 50s and 60s racing all day for three days in a row. Everybody who comes dresses up in one of those eras, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, there is so much there. There's an old high street that looks like it's from the 1950s. There are, you know, musicians performing all day long. There is something called Over the Road, which is all food and uh, vintage fairground rides. And there's a big outdoor cinema. I think it played Grease. Um, there's just, there's so much to see. It's a really, really fun event and it's just getting bigger and bigger every year. Um, and um, as I say, it's now become a bit of a fashion event. But what I like about it is it's not just a standard fashion event. It is a vintage fashion event. So yes, it's all about dressing vintage, but they have something called the Revive and Thrive team and ambassadors who are people who encourage you when you come to Goodwood Revival to um, be 
wearing things that you already own, to be wearing vintage pieces, second hand, um, you know, sewing things, knitting things, making things yourself ethically and sustainably, mending clothing. That is their real focus for it as a fashion event, which I absolutely love. That is much more my sort of <laughs> my sort of thing. And because of that, in the last few years, I think especially since COVID, they have really started to do a lot of crafting workshops, which I think is amazing. So they've done a lot of handmade fashion workshops. So I think they've had crochet workshops in the past. Last year, Narissa Pratt ran a um, Sew Your Own Vintage Knickers workshop. They have really interesting talks on the Revive and Thrive fashion stage. So last year they had talks with Amber Bouchard, who is a fashion historian. Uh, they had uh, Paula Sutton from Hill House Vintage, all sorts of different people. This year, I know that there are going to be some really exciting people, including Patrick Grant coming to the show. Um, and I'm going to get to chat to a few of these people for the article, which is really exciting. But I'm also hoping that I will get some great footage for you guys in September in my vlog all about you know, revive and thrive fashion and what it's all about and give you guys a really good idea of this event. If you are coming to Goodwood Revival, then please do leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. I would love to know anybody else who's coming, what they're wearing, what they're doing and all that good stuff. Okay, so we really need to get started. Um, So for the article, I am going to talk a little bit about making, um, sewing, you know, vintage um, clothes and trying to stick with the revive and thrive theme and how that's all worked for me. So that's part of um, my article and so therefore I am making lots of outfits. <laughs> not lots of outfits but um I I've decided that because we're there for the full three days we're gonna do a different decade each day so 1940s on the Friday 1950s on the Saturday and 1960s on the Sunday and my husband is matching me as well he's buying very little he has quite a lot and what he is buying he's buying second hand um I am making stuff but I would just like to preface this with the fact that everything I am making was already on my list to make I already already had plans to make these clothes a lot of them I already actually had the fabric for them so it sort of fits in with that revive and thrive um you know theme of being sustainable being careful I'm using a lot of accessories I already own and things I don't have I'm searching for on vintage and in charity shops so I am being very very mindful of the sustainability aspect of this um she says wearing a dress made of curtains <laughs> Um, you guys know that this is what I absolutely love. Um, I love to make my wardrobe as sustainable as possible. So let's get started with the Friday. So it's 1940s. Now that really spans such a great change in the fashion industry because you start in sort of 19, you know, 40 the beginning of the war, um, things, you know, were still had that very much 1930s look to them, that lovely kind of, um, you know, like, pencil skirt type midi length you know that kind of thing and as the war went on skirts got a little bit shorter because we had less fabric things all got very sort of tight and fitted and nothing was very flowy um, and people would you know do things like make skirts out of their dad's old tweed trousers there was a lot of tweed there was a lot of hard wearing fabrics um that would last a while because you know clothing rations were quite serious um, and it did actually last for quite a long time um, and so you still see that going through past 1945 you see it going through for quite a few years but as you get to the end of the 40s you started to get you know Christian Dior's new look came in I think 1947 which was all you know voluminous loads of fabric bright colours so as I say with the 1940s you really have a lot to choose from I decided to go slam bank in the middle <laughs> because I thought it would be really fun to do a sort of victory war outfit um so I've seen quite a lot of people um because I follow a lot of vintage uh fashion people on Instagram um I've seen a lot of people do what's called a victory jumper there is a free pattern on the VNA website for an original 1940s victory jumper um and a lot of people have made it and it is stunning and so that was my first inspiration was I saw that and I thought you know what I quite fancy knitting a little something it's the only thing I'm gonna knit for the whole show because obviously it's vintage I could go to town with knitting um but it is always quite warm in September here I remember last weekend 
it was one of the hottest weekends of the year um, that Goodwood was on and it's happened in the past as well. The, the two times we were there, it was a very hot day, you know, lots of sun cream, sun hat situation. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, I didn't want to go crazy with the knitwear because I know I'm not going to wear it too much, but I thought 1940s actually, I really quite fancy making something. So I delved into my stash because as I say, this is all about being sustainable and using up what I have. And I had this yarn, which is a French navy, it's called, it's a style craft acrylic yarn. It's been sat in my stash for about three years, had quite a lot of it in this lovely French navy colour because I bought it years ago when I was first knitting and um, I was buying things acrylic and cheap and I wasn't really being that sustainable. Um, and um, I just never got round to knitting it. So I was like, you know what, this is the perfect time to um, knit with this yarn. Um, I had a little look at the original uh, Victory Jumper pattern and uh, firstly it's in four ply so I would have had to have bought some different yarn. Secondly um, it is only in one size and it's quite a small bust size as with a lot of vintage patterns and I basically decided I could not be bothered to do all of the grading and fitting because I have a very large bust but quite narrow shoulders and it just seemed like too much of a pain to figure it all out. So I delved into my knitting pattern stash and I brought out the rosary apparel um, pattern, the rosary jumper, which I've made in the past. I'll pop up a picture. I made it in a beautiful burnt orange colour. It is a 1970s um, pattern, I think, originally. It's an old pattern that she found, I think, in a charity shop or something. And... Um, yeah, she um, shared this when she knitted it up for herself and everybody loved it so much, they asked her for the pattern. So it's actually available on her YouTube, uh, on her YouTube, on her website as a free pattern. I'll link it below so you guys can find it. Um, but yeah, I was like, you know what? I've made that pattern before. I know how it fits. I know it fits well. I had a feeling it could be very similar to the victory style with the scallops the victory style jumper has these lovely scallops and you do it in red white and blue traditionally you know because obviously worked all over europe as a sort of you know victory outfit um i decided not to do red white and blue i did swatch up red white and blue at first but i just didn't really like it so i decided to go for blue and cream which is great because I have loads of this in my stash I've got quite a lot of the cream and all of the blue that I need and I already own the pattern so as you can see I've started already this is the back piece um and yeah it's worked out really well so it's this it's actually quite a simple um textured lace design and it you know causes these look this sort of lovely scallop detailing and I think it looks really cool I'm quite excited I feel like um you know it'll look quite cute, cool with like jeans or under dungarees or something um, for after Goodwood Revival. You know, it's not super, super vintage. It'll definitely get some wear, which was really, really important to me to not be making things that, you know, will never be worn again because that goes completely against like what they're wanting for the show. So um, yeah, this is my first piece of knitwear. Um, as I say, I'm sort of like, you know, almost done with the back piece now. It's going to be quite a quick one because it's going to be short sleeve so it's probably gonna end just above the elbow which is a very like 1940s look I'll put up some pictures of the kind of inspiration that I've got for this very like 1940s look um where it's like a lovely cropped knitted jumper short sleeves with a nice skirt um so yeah that was my first thing that I started making is this lovely piece of knitwear. Now again, because I didn't want to make loads of things that I'm never going to wear again, I did think about making a skirt and I did think about going shopping for some fabric to make a skirt. But then I thought, actually, you know what? I think that it would look really cute with this beautiful red linen. Let me just hold this up. So you guys might remember this red linen. Um, it was in my summer makes plans. Um, so my summer sewing inspiration plans. Um, and I said that I wanted to make a red linen wrap dress, which um, I thought actually you could just pop this jumper over the top. <laughs> it's quite difficult to hold up for you guys. You could just pop this jumper over the top 
and then it looks like a red skirt and then it's a dress that I wanted to make anyway that I'll definitely get huge amounts of wear out of um, I was going to make it sort of midi length below the knee which is perfect for the 1940s look um, and then as I say I'm not making anything that I wouldn't have made anyway so that was my initial thought was to go with the wrap dress but since I have made this dress, which is the new Tilly and the Buttons nail dress, if you didn't know, as I say, I've got a video up about making this because I made it out of thrifted curtains. It is this pattern here. I absolutely love this dress. It is just stunning. It is so simple and easy to make. It was such a quick, easy make, even with 11 buttonholes. And I hate buttonholes with a passion. It was so easy to make. It's such a wonderful throw on dress. And I really, really want to make another one. This one is a full length maxi dress. So I really wanted to make another one like midi or knee length. And I think actually in this lovely red linen, I think that it's gonna look beautiful. I think that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna make, you know, the nail dress, the like the one in the yellow on the front um, in this lovely red linen. And so it'll have buttons all the way down the front, which again is actually quite 1940s. You see quite a lot of skirts with buttons down the front or dresses with buttons down the front. It also means as well that if it is very hot, as I say last year, I think it was the hottest day of the year on one of the days of Goodwood. I can take my knitwear off and have this lovely V-neck button down short sleeve red dress. It's quite sort of Peggy Carter style. Um, I think it works really well for mid 40s. So that's what I'm going to do. That's my 40s look. Um, I don't have any shoes. I need to have a little look on Vinted and in the charity shops for some shoes. I have some shoes that might work, some little heeled sandals, um, but I'm not sure. I need to like wait until I've actually made the outfit. Um, I'm also going to attempt to teach myself how to do victory rolls. So when I was a vintage girl, I used to do a lot of vintage hairstyles um, and I used to do a lot of updos. So I'm going to have another go, like delving back into how things I used to do a decade ago and see if I can recreate some victory rolls um, because I think that would just set the whole thing off perfectly like victory roll hair bright red lips red skirt and little knitted navy and white um, striped top I think that would be super cute and then I also have um, let me just grab it from my little stack of oh things um, this handbag which is a vintage um navy leather handbag now this i'm pretty sure is actually 1950s you can tell the kind of style it's so lovely look at that like the craftsmanship on that um it's a 1950s handbag um and i think you know the shape of it even really looks 1950s but I think I can get away with it. You know, it's an original vintage handbag. It goes really well with the outfit. It's really good colour choice for the outfit. So I think I'm just going to go with that. I'm just going to use this as my little 1940s handbag, even though it's not technically correct. I don't think the handbag's changed hugely. So I think I'll get away with it. The other option as well, other than victory rolls, is to have a little look on Etsy, vintage shops, secondhand shops, etc. for a 1940s style um, hat, like a big, you know, some kind, I don't know whether it would be a sun hat or what. I'll have to have a think about that. I'll have a look and see what I can find and then I can make a decision about my hair. I also want to have a little look for some round um, 1940s sunglasses. So they were very, very fashionable back in the 40s with the like really circular ones um, because I think all of those details will just really take it to the next level. I'll probably do pearl earrings. Um, I have some white gloves, so I may wear those. Um, once the outfits are made up, up, I'll, like the dresses and stuff are made up I can then start to work on the accessories um so yeah we'll sort of see how it goes and I'll start adding and adding slowly over the summer and hopefully by September have a full 1940s outfit okay so now moving on to the 1950s so this is my Saturday outfit now this one I did look all through my stash and all through my patterns and I tried to find something that would work but I love the 1950s it is one of my absolute favorite times and I didn't want to just like 
bodge it so I really wanted to make something that made me feel really fabulous so I have actually purchased some fabric however it is dead stock fabric so it's still along that sustainability route um it is it should actually be here by the time I'm editing this video so I'm hoping to get some cutaways for you it is a beautiful viscose blue fabric with pink peonies all over it and I just think it's going to be stunning especially if we're going to have gorgeous sunny weather which is something as as I say that's quite common at Goodwood. So I decided to go for a real summery 1950s look. I have some vintage 1950s white um, leather dense gloves which I bought from the charity shop which go up quite high. So I'm sort of envisioning a beautiful 1950s tea dress, white gloves. I then have um, the most fabulous hat. <laughs> So this I already own. Uh, yeah, it has holes in the side so that you can have like a ribbon. It used, it came actually with a ribbon that then comes through and ties under your chin, but I never wore it. So I took the ribbon off. But I was thinking that if I had enough fabric left over after I've made the dress, I might make a matching ribbon to go around the hat and either tie in a big bow at the back or tie in a bow under my chin. Um, we'll sort of see <laughs> which one looks best. And I also have already in my collection of sunglasses, these <laughs> fabulous cat eye sunglasses, obviously. And then of course we have handbags. So these two are both vintage handbags, original 1950s handbags, obviously already shown you the blue one. So the blue one is definitely an option because I think that'll go really nicely with the fabric. But I also have this lovely neutral one. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. I'm just looking at myself in the viewfinder like this, this, <laughs> this right here is a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I've got this lovely neutral one so again we will see once the dress is made and the ribbons made for the hat I've got some um little pumps as well some like little navy pumps or little pink pumps that I could wear um depending on what goes best so I've got basically all the accessories I just need to make the dress and for that I am also let me just put all this down because I feel a little bit ridiculous yes for that dress um I have decided um I will either make the Betty dress by Sew Over It which I already have I have a pdf version of that um which is a very classic you know in at the waist and out or I will make the kitty dress now I don't own that pattern so I will need to purchase that one um so I haven't decided yet which one. I do like the kitty because it's a v-neck and it's got a little collar and buttons up the front. And I just think that is so cute. And I'm going to have a little look as well in my belt collection to see if I can find like a white belt or something to go around the middle or a pink one would be even better. Um, so as I say, I'm like really looking at everything I already have and trying to put stuff together as much as I possibly can. Um, I was also thinking as well that this is the kind of dress that I will wear for years um, because it's just a beautiful, simple summer dress in the most gorgeous fabric. Pink peonies are my favourite flowers. So I absolutely love this fabric. So I know it's going to get so much wear past Goodwood. Um, however, to really make it um sparkle um for the 1950s i am going to have a little look on vintage and see if i can get myself a full tool underskirt so like a big puffy underskirt so that i have got that big 1950s shape so that it sticks right out um so yeah we're gonna have like in at the waist big poofy big straw hat big sunglasses fabulous gloves and you know handbag and all the rest of it so this is going to be a really fun look um and i like the fact that it's so different to the sort of 1940s like you know wartime look this is a very much like we are in the 50s um so yeah i am really excited for this look i can't wait to wear that and that's the day as well actually that my husband is wearing his um two-piece linen suit with a straw hat so we're gonna literally look like we're on holiday in the riviera in the 1950s which to me is a dream <laughs> a dream come true so um i am super super excited for that um i will keep you guys updated as to which pattern i end up making um whichever one i'm gonna do a twirl of i've got some like bedding and things like that in my stash so i'll probably make a twirl just to check the bodice for but either of those patterns the kitty or the betty um we'll see which one fits best and which one looks best um but yeah i am so excited for that one Okay, 
Now we're moving on to the 1960s and this one is still up in the air so I'd really love to know what you guys think. So we have multiple options. Let's start with the first one. So I bought this pattern. Sorry if it's a bit rustly. Actually, why don't I just get it out and then it won't be rustly. <laughs> Um, I bought this pattern last year. So this is a sim simplicity pattern, um, 8505, and it is a recreation of an original 1960s vintage pattern that Simplicity bought out, obviously back in the 1960s. Um, and basically it is a vintage like caftan style maxi dress that's the word sorry um yeah sorry i've been saying 1960s it is actually 1970s but this style was also popular in the late 60s so i feel like it's gonna kind of cross over but this is an original vintage pattern and basically i cut this version out this long version out um last year last summer in like August, September time, my plan being to make this beautiful, voluminous, voluminous, you know, super lovely maxi dress that I could just float around the house in because it was like 32 degrees and I just wanted something to like throw on and be really cool in. When I say cool, I'm talking like temperature, not um, <laughs> like cool. Um, and so that's already cut out in this fabric, which again is dead stock fabric. I bought it last year um, with these lovely palm leaves. Now, my concern with this is that it is, you know, it is a 1970s pattern. And I would also say that this print is probably quite 70s. And I'm sort of trying to decide whether or not I can get away with it. I was already going to make this dress up anyway. So I will be making this dress up. I will sew this dress up and it will be worn lots anyway. Um, so I guess the decision can be made later on. But yeah, I was sort of thinking big maxi dress, go for like beehive hair. And then <laughs> I got these bad boys. <laughs> so these again are just like from years past when I used to be a vintage girly. Um, so yeah, very fabulous look. <laughs> so um, I feel like this could be really fun. Big maxi dress, big beehive hair. I also think I've got some leftovers of this fabric to be able to make a big hair like tie so it'll be like a you know that comes and down here you know that look very sort of 1960s and some big earrings so that is a definite possibility and i think looks really cool and as i say already gonna make anyway but i also delved into my stash and i got this out i'm just gonna keep these sunglasses on because obviously i look fabulous um <laughs> This I bought last summer from Hey so Sister. It is the most beautiful, stunning, high quality viscose fabric. I fell in love with it when I saw it and I was like, I need that. I need to make a super cute little dress out of that for the autumn time. I didn't get round to making a dress with it, unfortunately, um, because um, I wanted to do like a toile of the pattern first because this is very expensive, very nice fabric. Um, I am now making the pattern with a bed sheet already i've got a video coming out about that actually um it is the mccall's 7969 that i've been wanting to make for ages so i am going to be making a practice run of that pattern um okay i am i am actually just gonna <laughs> um i'm gonna be making a practice run of that pattern this summer in the next couple of weeks actually so if it goes well I think I'm going to make this. Now, the plan was to make this a short version. So the one I'm making is a maxi dress version, but it doesn't matter. You just cut it off shorter. I've seen somebody um, who's made like a tiered knee length version. And I just thought in this fabric that could look really cool because it is a very 60s style print. And I feel like we should really lean into that. Um, so yeah, that is also a possibility is I could make myself a knee length like baby doll style dress. And then I've got these fabulous sunnies, hello. And then I do like a big beehive. I've got some earrings as well that are daisies, little crocheted daisies, white with yellow in the middle, which is obviously like very 60s. Um, and then I would probably just have a little look on vintage or secondhand for a little pair of like um, either knee high or ankle length white boots. Um, and I think that would look 
really cool. I could wear it with my ankle length black boots, but I feel like it would be fun to just fully go for it. I can tell as I talk you through this, I'm already leaning more towards this one. So I think I probably will end up wearing this because I think the other one is a bit too 70s. I think this one is a bit more fabulous. And if there's enough fabric of this left, again, I would do like the big beehive, but I'll see if I can make a sash to wear. So I've got like the sash the earrings, the sunglasses, the fabulous dress and the little white boots. I think that would just be such a cool look for the Sunday. So that is my 60s look. Okay, so that is everything that I am making for Goodwood Revival 2024. I am so excited. This is going to be the most fun summer of vintage sewing and vintage knitting and putting together these outfits. I'm so pleased that I have so many bits that I can already use. I really need to have a little route around in my attic because I know I've got some other like accessories accessory bits somewhere so I need to have a really good look for those and pull all of that stuff out. As I said I will be making a full vlog of the weekend of everything I wear and what I do because it's going to be such a fun thing. It may even end up getting split up into two videos if it's quite long um, so we will see how that goes. Um, let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see a vlog of me making each outfit and starting to put each outfit together so if you'd like you know some sewing vlogs of me sewing them up and like starting to style them um leave that in the comments below um because i did think that might be quite a fun thing to do to make a few little vlogs over the summer of me actually making these things up um i would really love to hear what you guys think as well what do you guys think about the 60s one which one do you think i should go for as i say i think i'm already leaning towards the brighter more colorful version so let me know what you think um and yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, next week is going to be a roundup of everything that I made in May and June. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like because it really just helps, um, you know, other people to find my channel and it really helps to boost my channel. Um, thank you so much to... Sorry if you can hear that. That's the dog knocking on the door. Obviously, I've been so long. Um, yeah, thank you so much to everybody who's already signed up to um, my sub stack. Um, I will leave the link in the description bar below for anybody else who might be interested in my newsletter and my Substack articles. They come out every single week and they're all to do with living a handmade and homegrown life. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.